Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you our review of The Ravens of Fry Sahashri by Osprey Games, so this is the 2016 edition. And let's start with what the game actually is. So this is a card game and it is a cooperative card game, but with limited communication, whereby one player is kind of building up a puzzle while also trying to deduce what the other player's cards are and the other player is trying to give hints about what their cards are based on what they're choosing to take and they're both working together to try and meet the same goal. So thematically what it is is that Ren has had a traumatic life and has just slipped into a coma and her mind is falling apart and her memories are being devoured by the ravens of Fry Sahashri. Her friend, Beth, is a psychic and is delving into her mind, trying to piece together her memories again and save her from the ravens. So what do I think of it? Well, let's start with the artwork. So, I mean, you can see just looking at the box here, it's anime artwork. I actually really like this anime artwork. It's very pretty throughout all of the game. You know, even the backs of the cards are quite serene and enjoyable. The player cards here are gorgeous with full color. And then the rest of the cards, well, the Raven's a little bland just with the Raven, but stylized nice and kind of fits with a kind of nightmare Raven as it's meant to be. They're there devouring memories, etc. And then on these memory cards, which are the main cards in the game, you've got all these different pictures, which are kind of black and white sketches with some faded color areas over them, etc but they work really nicely and I enjoy them and I think they're very beautiful and it all fits nicely with the theme. You know, some of these memory cards depict good memories, some depict bad memories and there's lots of different ones there. So artwork wise, it carries on throughout all the game. I do enjoy it. Now, obviously if you're not a fan of anime artwork or this just isn't your style of artwork, you're probably not gonna enjoy it. So let's move on to components. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the box here because this isn't a standard box. So it has this kind of hardback-esque slip-off case. And I think this is different, it's unique, and I like it. Now, it's also, I like it because Osprey Games used to be a purely books publisher. And since moving into games, they've had with the packaging on all of their games so far, kind of a throwback to that. Like with uh, previous games, the case boxes opened as if they were a book like that. And then with this, it's got that kind of hardback effect. I like that. It's nice. It's a kickback to their roots and it will help them stand out, I think, to have that thing following through in all their products. So then, of course, the main component is the cards. But let's first talk about this rule book. So the rule book here is very pretty. There's some nice flavor text there to help you get into the whole story. It's very well written, um, but it doesn't do a good job of explaining how to play the game. And I don't know if that's just because it's a very different game to a lot of other games out there, but both me and my wife read through the rule book and were like, huh? And it took like, okay, so we can do this and this. And then even the first few plays, we were still making errors. And it's a very complex thing to get across. I don't know if they could have done it better with the rule book, but I did find trying to learn this from the rule book extremely difficult. But luckily for you, you can use my how-to video and that'll hopefully help you. So then of course we have these cards and these are giant tarot cards and they are beautiful. They're very thin, but this is kind of a requirement because they do need to kind of stack on top of each other. The actual quality of these, they're nice finish. There's a bit of rubbing off happening on the back of the cards. You probably can't see it very well on the, on the camera. It's very slight. Um, I don't think it's much to worry about. But as I say, yeah, it's nice quality, well put together. 
And then the final component is these little envelopes here. Um, nothing really to talk about with them. <laughs> Let's just leave them alone. No, no huge component loss or gain there. So let's talk about the gameplay itself because that's what most people really care about. Now, I'm gonna start by saying I am not keen on asymmetrical games. And there are a few which I will still enjoy playing and still work really nicely to my mind, where that asymmetry, you're doing different things, but it's still a balanced gameplay and that's not the case here. So when you're playing as Feth, you are doing pretty much all the work. You know, most of the decisions, most of the delay is going to be on the Feth player. The Rem player is doing one thing a turn and only one thing a turn. So it is a very unbalanced game. Now, when me and my wife played, we've played several ways round, and we actually found that there was only one way which actually worked for us. If we tried it the other way, I got bored as the Rem player because there was just not enough for me to do. Um, I spent too long sat waiting for my wife to make decisions as the Feth player. And then we switched it round and we tried the other way around with me being Feth and her being Ren. And it worked much better. She was much happier having the fewer decisions. So that did work okay for us, and you might find as well that it does. However, if you are looking to have a balanced play experience where you're both equally involved in what is going on, then this game falls short on that, unfortunately. However, all the mechanics there are actually really interesting and work really nicely. The deduction element of you know how many of each number there are, of each colour there are, etc. Of going, okay, well, we've had this, we've had this, we've had this, so that card must be this, and trying to gain information by reliving those memories. And the puzzle aspect of building that Atman of where do you place those cards? And for Ren, where do you take the card from? Because not only is it for Ren, where do you take the card from in order to give information, because you need to pick a card that will give information but without losing you scoring. But you're also trying to gain the powers that you're going to need later on in that dream. So there is a lot going on in this game and it is really interesting. As I say, I found it much more engaging as Feth because when you've got the decisions of you're drawing all the cards and you're choosing what to put out, what to discard, you've got the choice of all the powers to use there is a lot more decisions you can make. Now, that's not saying that the Ren player doesn't make any, because as I've said, they do. So, yes, it is a very intriguing game, a very interesting game, a very in-depth game, with a lot of different strategy. But it is a very difficult game as well. And your first few plays, you are going to lose. And then it gets to a point where you've started to kind of I think it's more if you're working with the same person each time, you get a feel for what they're doing and how it, that works with relation to the game. And I guess that's going to be the way with most deduction games. And you start to get a feel for this is the way to play this game in order to win. But then when you win, you get to open one of these little envelopes. So this is kind of a small legacy thing. And I'm not going to talk too much about these because I don't really want to give anything away, it, it would be a spoiler for you. But that will then help give this game new life and will help carry on the story and also just keep the replay value up on this game. Now, this is one of those games that because of that initial difficulty, we actually found ourselves sat playing game after game because we'd play a game, it'd be, oh, we've lost. Let's try again, oh, we've lost. OK, well, I think I see where we're going wrong now. Let's try again. And so it very much does have that. Just one more try. Just one more try. Come on, we can we can beat this. We can beat this. But then once you've beaten it, that fades away a little. However, my final thoughts on this game are it is a good game. It is a two player only game. So that kind of answers the question. Can two play this game? Who would like this? If you like deep thought kind of puzzly strategy deduction games, you will really enjoy playing the Feth player because Ren has all the information. She knows what's going on. 
and Feth is the one trying to deduce it. If you like being a kind of person who is giving hints in their actions and feels they're good at doing that, keeping in mind you can't say anything, then you might enjoy playing as Ren. Now, it's definitely a game worth giving a go. It's a low price point game, it is a beautiful game, and it is a great deal of fun and very addictive to begin with. So I hope that you have enjoyed this review and I do hope that you will continue to watch my videos as well as checking out the rest of the videos on the channel. You'll also subscribe and share it with your friends and family and check us out on social media. You can find us on Twitter and on Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.